Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shenanigans. Greg, take it away. All right. So you are standing there, a, a recent corpse at your feet, and three ethereal, gaseous forms of knights with blades drawn stand in front of you. Um, uh, each of them lay their hand out in, in unison in front of you, and each say in a, in a unison voice that just kind of reverberates through your mind, more so than it comes actually out of their mouth, and it says, give us the weapons. What Are happened to the one board? guy again? I'm sorry. The the guy you pulled them out of, he collapsed on his knees in front of you and then emitted all this gas. Before. Right, right, but is his body still on the ground? Still there. Okay, all right. That's what I wanted to check. Yep. Uh, Are they already armed? Like, do they already have swords? They it, their gaseous form is including a, a blade in their in their hand. It seems to be made of gas. I'm still holding my breath. So. Okay. Well, if they're taken form, I'm like, it's all right to breathe, I guess. Um, I wait for him to take a deep breath before I. All right, all right, I breathe in. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I oh. promise. <gasps> okay. I'm gonna take the two swords and I'm going to put them down the back and pull out the kapesh. Be like, all righty. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in glory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Elfie, I don't have a weapon. <laughs> Elfie? All right, so they, they um, th when you say, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die in glory, and you draw the Kopesh, you hear um, just uh, a, a silence in your mind as the rumbling voice demanding the weapon silences, and the three of them advance upon you with their swords uh, in, in front in an aggressive manner. All right, uh, I'm gonna so oh. Oh, let's roll initiative. All right, and then I'm going to toss you the try to. What's the weapon uh, speed of By the way, Ralph, you do have one of the swords in your hand. Yeah, but I'm not proficient with a sword. Are you proficient with a trident? I'm proficient with a pitchfork, which is very similar to a trident. All right, yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe like just a penalty of three instead of five? Uh, I don't like the groups, but uh, I mean, what's the difference really between a pitchfork and a trident? The number like of a prongs? Pitchfork, a trident is a pitchfork of ocean people, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think you're fine. You can use that. All right, what is the weapon speed of your trident? Four. Oh, that's because you're specialized, but you got the two-handed thing, so seven for uh, me. Seven. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And a ten. Plus, oh. Come on, one. I rolled it. Okay. All right, so, and Ralph, it appears that you have taken the initiative here. What are you okay. doing? I got eleven. Um... I am going to hold an action. I will prepare a, a thrust at anything that gets too close to me. Okay. Yeah. Except okay. for except for Elfie, he can get as close as he wants. Oh yeah, I bet he can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're an item, man. You gotta you gotta stick close to your your buddy. All right. So uh, you have your with... exit, buddy. All right. So uh, lock. You uh, you go next. You 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 are out on eleven. What do you do? Alrighty. Um, holding my kapesh with two hands, I'm gonna swing at the closest one. See what happens. All right. Uh, make a make an attack roll for me. Okay. God's help me. Plus. What are we working out to be? This one. Seventeen. Uh, 17 is a hit. Please roll some damage. Okay, and it is. Indeed. Four plus uh, three. Oh. Oh. Uh, try a uh, 2D. There we go. All right. So you, your, your Kopesh swings in an arc slashing uh, through this uh, incorporeal thing. And it, it clearly um, doesn't make solid contacts it would through flesh, but you can see the twisted agony in the, in the humanoid form of this visage um, as your sword swings through it. And in your mind, you just hear the reverberations of a, of a deathly howl. Um, and then it is their turn. Um, and the two of them advance towards you um, with their, two of them advance towards you, Milman, since you have two swords, and one of them advances towards Ralph. Ralph, this one's coming up in thrusting range. Ah, oh, stab him! Stab him! Nine. 
Uh, nine is not a hit. Uh, you stab through incorporeally to no effect. Oh shit, Elfie! They're not there! It's all and, good, it's all uh, good. Just keep swinging. The, they lift their blades and the two of them will attack you, Mr. Mr. Lock. There is one attack against you and two attacks against you. Are they okay. both hits? Uh, 15 is the same as my armor plus my parry thingy, but the 19 will hit. So 15, it does, does not, it doesn't match? Okay. It matches, it's equal. Okay, so that's a hit. Okay. So you take... Oh god, I'm gonna die in one go. You take six points of damage from the two of them slashing at you uh, with their with their blades. Um, and you have one and two on you. Um, I'm down already. Oh, okay. Well, what further happens is some of your um, blood that seeps out turns to wine. And, and as you're collapsing, you, you feel a little better about yourself. And then, and then you oh, go life, is, life is great. Yeah, life is great as, as you fall down. Um, the, the third takes a swing at uh, you, Mr. Ralph. Uh, Ralph. Um, and a seven, I assume, does not hit you. No, AC 10. Yes. Ebola. Um, initiative, everyone. All right, I can do this. Um, and go ahead and make your initiative roll lock uh, just with a, a D10 uh, plus three for your medium size. And we'll, we'll know that's when you bleed out a point of damage. Cool. Sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so they go on an eight. They 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 beat you, uh, uh, Ralph. Uh, two of them um, pick up the swords uh, out of uh, Milman's body, or uh, he he was had them on his back. They pick them out of the back, and as they do so, the two swords disappear, and so do they. Um, the oh, you're kidding one, me. Um, Advan looks at you angrily and take it, take the sword. I drop my I drop my try to take the sword, take the sword. You can do that on your turn. Oh, okay. Uh, D20 plus two is a seven yes. once again. It yes. misses you. Um, and so your turn comes around uh, on, an, on an eight. Uh, uh, I no take a four, you bled out one point of I damage. I throw the trident to the ground, grab the sword, and just like toss it in the guy's direction. <laughs> all right, all right. You toss it at him. Uh, it forces through incorporeally. Um, it, on, on there, we won't even go initiative. On his next turn, he, he goes over to the sword, picks it up, and he and the sword vanish. All right, I run over to to Elfie and roll him over and see if I, there's something I can do. Is he, like, physically wounded? He is, he is. There's a, a deep gash as if he had been struck by two swords across his torso. Um, noticeably, one of them is bleeding, um, and the other one seems to be seeping like a, a different colored liquid, reddish, but looking much more like ale than, than blood. Uh, oh, I drink uh, too much. Uh-oh. Um, I start to unlace my shoes and use those to like bind his wounds, so, oh. you know, like make a tourniquet around wherever he's wounded. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, sure. Um, you don't have medicine, do you? No. Um, intelligence check, baby. All right, let's do it. Come, Come on. on. Save me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that should be a Whoa. 16, plus 16, so 31. Thank you. A 31. Much. Okay. Even better. Um, so you, you definitely, um, you definitely know enough about bleeding in the body and being a wizard. Maybe you've cut up a lot of pigs on your farm. Like you know how to stop bleeding when you mm -hmm. need to, but you don't really have medicines. So you don't, you can't really bring anyone back from where they are, but you, you tie them up. You, you, you cinch your shoelaces tight from your new leather boots and you, you get everything back where it's supposed to be. And Milman, you stop bleeding out. You, you are stabilized, uh, but you are unconscious. Good man. All right, all right. Uh, I look around, I've got that piece of paper that has the music written on it, don't I? You do. Okay, uh, is it basically level from here to the doorway? Which door? The, the door yes. that we came the in The answer from. is yes to all three doors. The okay. one at your back, the one to the west, and the one to the north. Uh, I, I grab his hands, no, I grab his feet. No, I should grab his hands so his head doesn't roll on the ground. I grab his hands and lift him up so his head won't like bang on the ground and start dragging him towards the door. Check the dead king. 
Oh, hell no. No, no, no. <laughs> I just dragged my, my buddy. Which door are you going to? The one that I came from. Okay. You begin dragging uh, Locke towards the door. You open it, and inside there are two giants locked in a wrestling match in this giant pit, thrusting back and forth. The walls bang and shake, and you have this very, very thin path around this pit um, leading to a, a door. I look down at Elfie, look across longingly to the door on the other end. I can carry 90 pounds on me and move at movement rate one. Um, I try and lift Elfie. Does he weigh more than 90 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> what do you weigh? Uh, 165 pounds. Is it, it's just like an open pit and then there's a pedestal, right? There's that's a pedestal no, inside insane. of the pit. It's now fallen down to the middle of it as the shadow of these massive creatures block out the light down to the floor. I can do this. How far across is the pit? Roughly. It is... Roughly a 20 foot radius, so 40 foot in diameter. Can I see what's on the pedestal? Um, yes. Uh, you look down, and in the center of the pit, there's a small little uh, crystal ball, about the size of a, of a child's fist. Um, and it, it has the same kind of palish glow um, that the light above had before these shadows have uh, of the giants blocked it out from your view. All right. Uh, I prop Elfie up in the doorway, pat okay. him on the head, and say, I'll be right back for you, buddy. I ain't going nowhere without you, okay? You hold in there, Elfie. Uh, and then I drop myself down into the pit. You're gonna go down into the pit Wait, where the before I go in the pit, before I go in the pit, I look to see if I can see my pitchfork in there anywhere. Your pitchfork is in there, along with the okay. dagger near the column. Okay. However, there is a very clear and present danger in the pit. There are four legs of giant women that are currently in a tussle and wrestling match, and they are not staying still, right? Uh, I got that. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna get the trident. That I that Elfie had given me. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna right. watch the 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 women from where they're like going back and forth. Are they kind of keeping their same positions on either side of the pit, or are they going all directions? They are. They are in the course of like trying to push each other down. Like it, it seems like a sumo match. It's like mm -hmm. these these giant women are angry at each other and trying to get the best of themselves. But they are, they are in the center of this pit, almost like sumo, shoving and pushing. They're stepping back and forth. They do seem to be kind of on one side or the other, but they're, they're, they're stepping back and forth in this pit, trying to push the other over. Does it look like I could edge around the outside without getting... Like Potentially. I, you might get very unlucky and get smashed by someone's like thigh or ass, but uh, it's possible you could get all the way around without getting smashed. Seems worth. All right. So trident in hand. I edge around. All right. Please roll me a d100. Please don't die. It's I, good I knowing you, man. Without dying. All right. You are very lucky. And as the, the giantess gets shoved back towards you, it is immediately coming for you. You see your life flash before your eyes, and you hear the thump really loud right above you as her ass just misses the top of your head. The whole walls rumble and you don't get squished. And they step forward once again in their wrestle. You're trying at the ready and you, you begin edging back around the circle and you make it to the other side knowing that you were one roll of the dice away from death, like literally one point on the dice. Like an 86? Yeah, yeah like an 86 kills you. Nice. All right, so I go, I open the door on the other side I prop the trident so it like holds open the door. I don't know why I'm holding the doors open, but Elfie told me to do it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> By God, we're doing it. We're doing it, I don't know if it helps. Um, and then I'll run down the hallway with the piece of paper in my hand, waving it to the, the blue woman. Right, she was blue colored, I think. She does, her, her yeah. skin glows just a, a little bit blue. Blue lady, blue lady, help me, help me. She narrows her eyes at you <clears throat> and uh, she, 
She looks at you. She says, I thought I told you to bring what I wanted. I got the music. I got the music. It's right here. But but my friend needs help. And there's these giant women. And can you help me get my friend back out? Or, or get rid of the giant women so I can get them out on my own? She thinks and says, I possibly could. Let me see the paper. Uh, 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 look, back on my farm, we, we know the, the expression, uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I'm not giving you this paper until you you give me some assurances that I can get the hell out of here and that you're going to help me out with my friend. A deal was struck and a chord was made. If what you bring me is what I asked, then you shall leave this place with my aid. But help you I will not until you bring me what I want. Shift it to my other hand. I spit in my right hand and shake it up. You gonna shake on it? She she has another grim smile across her face. If this is what your simple mind needs, she spits in her hand a blackish, brackish goo and goes to offer it to you to shake. shake. All right, as you do, please make a save versus poison paralyzation. Wow. That is a pass. Yes. All right. You yeah. feel it burn a little bit as you make this accord, but it doesn't damage you too much. Yes. You just get like that hot little ring in your hand. Woo. Ah, hot. All right, cool. Here's the paper. I hand her the, the paper. She she grips it and begins reading. And uh, I want you to make a, a charisma roll, um, and I'm going to give you a plus five bonus for a really good role play. Um, oh, dude, you don't even, you don't want to do that. Cheating, babe. It's natural. Thirty-eight charisma. Alrighty. Crap. Yeah, charisma's by highest stat. It's tied with intelligence for sixteen. Everyone loves the poor peasant. He's so friendly. She she looks at you, and just disappointment comes across her face. You've seen this before, like you know, like when your parents are just—they're not mad at you. They're disappointed. And she's she's just disappointed. Claws click across her nice horns, and she sighs and says, perhaps this is what I get for asking the lower-minded imbeciles to aid me. Well, hey. Agreement is agreement. I believe full well that in your simple head this is exactly what you thought I asked for. What? And our accord was struck. She rolls it up and like sticks it in your shirt, like right here. She says, follow me. I will get you a friend. Oh, thank you, ma'am. She opens, she, she goes to the open door with the pitchfork and sucks in a tremendous breath and breathes out <sighs> this enormous cloud of corrosive green brackish gas and it fills this cylindrical room. Um, and she does 5,000 damage to both giants. Slash and all. 11, 14. She does 59 points of damage to the the two giants in this room. Um, and they you can see them just being corroding and melting down. Uh, and they uh, they uh, just they fall and melt and die into these puddles and as they do so the giant form of them comes apart from them and they shrink down into their chameleon woman shape with their cleavers in hand into like melting corroding puddles in the center of this pit and slowly the light makes it back down and the pit seals these puddles beneath the floor wow well you are a special kind of lady aren't you uh, now, th- thank you about that. Now, I-, I gotta go get my friend. Um, gotta watch out for that shadow. Uh, and I try and, you know, time it so I walk behind the shadow. And then I want to grab Elfie's hands and, you know, wait for the shadow to pass again and then walk back. Um, okay, yeah, you can do this. You're, you're well aware of the way the room works. Um... And uh, you have him basically on top of you, so his shadow is essentially your own. It just like lengthens it or changes the shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you walk outside of the of the room, um, back into the center. And she says, "With my age, you will pass through unabated." And she points to the center room, um, and the door kind of shifts and changes. And she says, "Walk through there. You will find one last test." of which I cannot have you bypass. 
but I will tell you, listen closely to what is said, and if you do so, you will be out of here ahead. And she, she um, puts her hand on, uh, on Locke and begins murmuring, um, and she casts a spell. And Locke, you regain six HP. Oh, perfect, full health. Oh, awesome. What happened? Oh, shit. Lizard lady. No, no, she's good. She she helped me save you. Um, oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. She The blue lady's all nice. She, she's real nice. Um, As you say she's real nice, a wicked smile crosses her face. She says, now, listen very carefully to what is said as you pass through the door, and you can make it and keep your head. But I don't expect either of you simple-minded fools to live through this. Good day. And she just begins back to walking and pacing, ignoring your very existence. I, I don't know what she meant by all that, but I think... We should get a drink sometime. I think you're cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, her, her breath, though. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh, don't worry about it. We're not kissing her or whatever. It's fine. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. See you some shenanigans sometime, and then I'm just going to, like, pick myself up. Woo. Go back, take the trident from you, if you're all right with that. Yeah, that's okay. I still don't have my pitchfork, but... Uh -oh, I guess we'll if get... I get 60 gold, I can buy me a new one. That's exactly right. All, All right. right, let's go. Okay. All right. You open the door, I assume? Yeah. All right. The the door, the, the room in front of you is um, plain walls, plain ceiling. The floor itself stretches ahead of you um, in a huge mosaic. The room is only 20 feet wide and 60 feet long, but the entirety of the floor is a mosaic of an incredibly beautiful woman. Um, and the, as soon as the door is opened and you, glaze, and you gaze upon it, um, you hear this sound um, hiss at you. And it's as if the floor itself is speaking. The grinding of the, of the, um, of the tiles of the mosaic make the noise. Um, and the, the words you hear are, the first to cross these coils must dance, the second sing to safety reach, the third must bleed or risk mischance, the fourth one dies between my teeth, the next will be the first once more, and do not cheat, I'm keeping score. Uh, how's your singing and dancing, Elfie? Uh, both pretty bad. Well, I, I ain't never had formal lessons, but I was a, a pretty good dancer back in my village. Uh, I, I could do a hoedown. Hey, that's dancing. Right? Okay, so it's coils. Uh, I look around. Is there anything that resembles a coil? Um, what are you looking for specifically? Um, first, I'm looking for like coiled things like ropes. Like anything. Coiled rope? Yeah. yeah. I guess we could dance in Oil. a circular, a spiral motion. But the first one to cross my coils must sing, right? Something like that. I, I... As soon as you say that out loud, you hear this grind out from the mosaic. You didn't listen to my rhyme and talked amongst yourselves like fools. You'll pay attention more next time. Now risk your death to find my rules. Oh, this sucks so bad. I, I just start dancing and like dancing and hoe down and across the mosaic. Okay, you begin dancing across the mosaic and you dance your little heart out and you're dancing. Give me a performance check just because I want to know. <laughs> you want to know how good it is. Yeah. Uh, Charisma, D20 plus 16. I don't know what you want to subtract from that, but... Um, it, it really doesn't matter too much. That yeah. is going to pass regardless. You do a really nice hoe down. You you hoe yourself all the way down that uh, down that sixty foot passageway, and you dance all the way to the end, and you are unaccosted as you reach the other side of the mosaic. Crap. Okay. I'm just staring at him like, "Fuck me!" He took the easy one. What was the saying again? What else was it? It was just the dancing, the singing. 
The the uh, stones lay silent in front of you. Not responding. I can't think of a, a funny ass song to sing while I rush my ass across. <laughs> sing or die. I love that. Um, the doorbell ring. Is there a bell? Um, you glance around the room and it is unadorned except for this mosaic on the floor. Okay. I think what I'll do, because I have a feeling I'm going to die anyway, is I'm going to sing in like the most panicked state. <laughs> like, I'm singing like, I'm going to die, but it is worth it to escape this hellhole and just sing the whole time. I'm like shuffling across uh-huh. the planet. Uh-huh. Oh, Do you care to give us a rendition of your of your song no. as you shuffle across? No. no, no. <laughs> I want a I want a nice uh, uh check here just to know. Okay. Plus 11. Come on, 20. Ah, uh, 21. Well, your singing is just on the borderline edge of singing, but you panic singing, oh my God, I'm about to die. This is terrifying, oh my dear Lord. And you do that little thing all the way across and are unaccosted as you reach Ralph on the other side. I'm gonna miss the pretty blue lady. Whew. Let's get out of here. All right. Uh huh. Let, let's get out. You cross the door and there is a small ledge hewn of rock in front of you and off this ledge a crevasse leading down into black depths as far as you can see just black depths and a single swinging rickety rope bridge leads off into the darkness alrighty let's go it's the only way out uh maybe maybe we should go one at a time nah just do it together screw it alright uh you first alrighty I'll lead the way. I'll be right behind you. All right. I do not step onto the bridge. I let him cross first. <laughs> yeah. I just charge. You step like, onto the bridge. Freedom! <laughs> just charge. <laughs> you charge through the bridge. Yep. Uh, it sways back and forth with each step you take, creaking and straining. The you you are suspended high over this black void and you make it all the way across this hundred foot bridge before you arrive at the other end um and at the other end there is a single column of stone and on it hangs a picture uh depicting a lounge room perfect can i still see him uh you look inside the the lounge um and it's unfamiliar to you you haven't seen this one before um but uh there's um a white-haired gentleman with a long mustache um, and a big white hat on. And uh, he's smoking a, a corn pop pipe with a, a big basket of fried chicken in front of him. Hey, that's my kind of guy. I'm I'm just getting my pipe ready. And like, Come on, Ralph, let's go. If he's off the bridge, I, I run across. Well, you I run walk across. across. It sways and twists with each step you take, swirling over this black oh, void. Oh, boy. And it, uh, it uh, just is terrifying to cross, but it holds together, and you make it all the way across. And you too see the large stone slab and the painting. All right. I lock my pipe and step through. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah, you light your pipe and you you go to touch the painting and step through. And you see Ralph him no longer there in front of you. And poof, you show up in this lounge room. Um, lock. And there's this, this man uh, with white hair and a mustache mid chicken bite staring at you as you came through with his picture into this room. His wide eyes just kind of looking. How's it going? And I look back at the painting. Come on, let's go, Ralph. I touch the painting and fall f- through. All right, you come through as well and his eyes shift to you. He says, what in heaven's name? Oh. Hey, you got a magical painting, my friend. And then I just take one of his pieces of chicken. It's like... Snotty, I'm like, where are we? Well, this is this is the mayor's lounge. I I am Mayor Sanders. I was elected not too long ago. How did you get in my painting? There was a painting in another house on the other side of town. We were asked to guard it, and a crazy woman pushed us into it, essentially. 
<laughs> don't, don't listen to him. He is full of tall tales. Uh, we're, we're just passing through, Mr. Mayor, and uh, we're, we're, we'll be on our way if that's okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, th th thank you kindly, I'm Mr. Mayor. This painting, it seems. Let's keep on uh, my yeah. room. Y you but might want to cover that well painting up but, and never uh, look at it, it seems again. seems like you can just pass through. We're not uh, to cover your painting at night. We out and just leave. Yeah, we'll just walk <laughs> out of his house. Yeah, definitely. Okay, when we get outside, you I are turn. outside and you are in Berkshire. You have stepped out of the out of the Colonel Sanders Manor, and uh, you you are back in in town. All right, is it daytime or nighttime? It is daytime. I look to to a lock and I say, "All right, so uh, we got to get back to the other manor because we got to yeah. get our sixty gold." All right. Um, all right. Let's, let's just uh, put the painting rule still there. All right. Ooh, you think if it's gone, they're gonna suspect us? Oh, they're of... gonna be pissed. Let's just go grab a pitchfork on the way past town, and we'll hook you up with a new pitchfork. Oh, I got that twelve gold. Let me go buy That's a pitchfork. Yeah, 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 yeah. You haven't tried it, man. They're only seventy. My story, they're only seven. Oh uh, no, I mean, I, I don't really know how to use one of these suckers. Get a fancy pitchfork then. No, no, that, that you look, okay. Mama told me that's a waste of gold and uh, a waste of money. And uh, hey. Mama didn't raise no fool, so I'm just gonna go buy me, buy, buy me a pitchfork for two gold instead of one of those expensive tridents. Um, excuse me, farmer, farmer, here, here, can I, can I buy your pitchfork, or you know, uh, blacksmith you, or you whatever? Just, yeah, he'll he'll sell you his pitchfork, especially if you flash gold at him. All right, yeah. I buy the pitchfork for two gold. I yeah. re-equip it. Yeah, he, he's he's real excited to take your your gold for a pitchfork. Cool. And then um, I guess we head How back to the, the other guy's house. How does so it go back to the uh, to the manor? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you begin you begin the trek through Berkshire and and back to the manor. Um, as you approach, um, you see uh, that uh, the guard has at least quadrupled since last you were here. There are eight men in various shapes of armor um, and weapons, just kind of patrolling is a, is, a, is a harsh word. They're not at super attention, but they're lounging about in the front of this. And you, you notice this before you get all too close. It's not that hard to see, but there are a ton of, of armor clad men with bows and cudgels and swords um, uh, in this manor house is like front. Hi, hey guys, hey, we're, we're coming here to see uh... Lord Humphrey, is is Lord Humphrey round? Um, you you call them over. Um, fortunately, none of them um are anyone that you had seen before, and a, one of them approaches you with uh with a studded leather armor on and a, and a long kind of rapier at his at his ready. He walks up the the path up to you so he can get close and not have to shout. And he says, Lord Humphrey, it seems. What business do you have at the manor, peasant? Oh, you see, we were employed last night to help guard the, the painted room, but then we got sucked, you know... It's you a, were the ones on guard at the painting room when it was stolen? The painting was stolen? Well, you I... You come with me, and he's going to, like, grab your arm. That's all right. Hey, there's, there's no okay. need for that. He grabs your arm and like hoists you next to him, and he says, "You." Points his rapier at you, Locke. He says, "You better come too." No, no, that's that's okay. We want to come with you. That's what I was calling for. We we, we want to talk to Lord Humphrey. You lower that sword, and we're coming. Fine, let him go. He he lowers the sword, but he doesn't let go of of um, Ralph. He just kind of shoves him along with him, and he gives a nod like this at the the other people, and you see three more um, studded leather men begin <laughs> walking out towards you. Boys, boys, it'll be all right. We just we're we're gonna go see Lord Humphrey. We're gonna sort all this out. He begins there... like roughly shoving you along in front of him as you're talking to the other men, and he's Boy. he's shoving you towards the the manor house. Hey, um. Hey, hey, Elfie, now that yeah. you're all um, healthy and everything, can I have my shoelaces back? Oh, yeah. And I undo the sh like, undo the <laughs> You untie your shoelaces from yourself and, like, hand them back. Thank um, you. You, you try to do this, uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's fine. You can do that. The other three men come over, and, like, they go to grab you as well um, once they get there and start shoving you along towards hey, the manor. Hey, hey, no need to be rough. We're coming peaceably enough. 
We're doing this the way it needs to be done, I assure all right, you. All right, all right, all right. And the first time I've been roughed up by a guard. You get shoved not into the gallery room, um, but instead you're taken uh, down a hall into the to a different part of the manor that uh, you didn't go into previously, past your rooms. Um, and you are essentially locked into a, a small room. Um, and sitting in there is is Jules and the um, and two of the the bigger, rougher guards, along with Humphrey himself. Uh, and uh, they they shove you down into chairs, um, and then you they're motioned off to to leave. Well, well, hey there, Julius. Uh, good to see you again, boy. Do we have a store for you? Yes. Well, it is not so good to see you again after this long week has passed. A week. You must tell me, what is this story? Oh, boy. my master is not a patient man. A week? You did not bring his painting with him, with you. Well, all right. Now, I kind of would rather talk to Mr. Lord Humphrey, because I, I don't know if you, you know... You would be talking all... to all of us present. I look at Elfie. Y- you, you, got, you got away with words, buddy. Um, all righty. You so, know, yeah. You, you, you... While we were guarding this painting, it came to life. There was a woman chained up. One of the men, uh, one of the, I can't remember what we called him, red shirt, and I hold out his ring. Now, Davy. Was it? I thought it was Johnny or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, it was Johnny. It's definitely Johnny. Yeah. Johnny went into the painting and unchained the woman. She came out of the painting, flipped it so that he couldn't escape. He was taken. And then she tricked me into falling into the painting, then tra- tricked Ralph here into the painting, and then... That was it. We were stuck inside a, a painting. We had to do some weird shit inside another realm, from what I could tell, to get out. And, and you've we, been uh, stuck inside a painting for a week. It felt and like you, one you day. You expect me to believe this ridiculous story. Well, hold on. You could go ask Colonel Sanders, the, the mayor of Berkshire. He saw us walk out of the painting in his house. Are you yeah. telling me Colonel Mayor? Mayor Sanders of Berkshire is responsible for the theft of my fortune. No, no, no. I, I didn't say he was responsible for the theft, but he can confirm that 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 we walked out of a painting, which which means that we must have walked into a painting to begin with. This is this drivel is preposterous. What? Well, what on earth makes me think you didn't just abscond with my painting? Well, why you, would we come you back? Even, you even slew the brothers Solomon and Bonathan. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Talk to Millman. Uh, talk to talk to Elfie here. He, Elfie, say that again. He, I don't he think he heard you. If we if we stole your painting and slew the brothers, why would we come back? Mm-hmm. To Argue with that one. To more of my riches, I am sure, your greedy bastards both. What? No, now hold on. My family only ever made 30 gold in a year. That's the most we ever hauled in. For the whole three of us. Now, you offered me 60 gold for two months' work. Now, that, that is more money than I could have shake a stick at. I, I ain't got no reason, no nor I can to steal no paintings. I mean, what the hell do I know about paintings? Huh? I was so grateful when you gave me a new pair of boots. Why would I steal one of your 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 paintings, huh? What, what Jules, would I do with it? Jules, what do you make of these fools' story? It is drivel to me, insanity. Jules says, hmm... I believe we have recourse. They did suggest that uh, we may talk with the mayor. Perhaps I shall send a rider. Hmm, we shall confirm their story. I do believe this one is too simple-minded, he says, gesturing at you, Ralph, to uh, make up something of this preposterous. Uh, oh, come on now. Hey, that's not that's not fair. Perhaps they're both ill in the head. Uh, look, I ain't stupid. I just born on a farm, all right? Hmm. Oh, look, I'm a wizard. I ask Elfie. He saw me cast all sorts of yeah. magic spells. He did good. He did real good. Do I and still have my glowing balls? playing this together. I don't believe this man to be a wizard. Do I, do I still have my glowing balls? It's it's got a, it's got a two hour duration. It's been a week outside oh. of that realm. So okay. as soon as you stepped outside of it, that would have far far surpassed your your. All right. Fair power. enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. 
he he uh the the humphrey sits with his his head in his hand like this clicking his 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 gaudy rings together and says very 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 well um you will send a rider to uh to the mayor and we shall hear if the that part of the preposterous story is true until then you two brutes lock them up take their weapons and keep an eye on them i don't want them stealing any of more precious hey, precious hey. paintings Hey. Here willingly. There's no need to take our weapons. We will come quietly. We'll come and sit wherever you want us to sit. You are not taking my weapons for no reason. Uh, the other, the other two of these these brutish-looking men stand up and they just advance like they're they're gonna do what they were told. I, uh, you know what? I, I surrender my weapon. I'm a peasant. I'm not okay. fighting any nobility here. Yeah. Uh, you, I, you hand over your your weapon. The other one advances on you, Locke, and uh, he's he's gonna hold out his hand, but he's not asking. He's demanding. Clearly. All right. I'll hand over the trident. All right, they hand it over. Uh, Humphreys and Jules leave. These two take all of your weapons. They lock the door behind them, and you're just in this, just in this hey, door for a while. There's Jules in here, huh? There's Jules in here, apparently. Hey, man, don't. Oh wait, what? Do you mean Jules or Jules the NPC? Jules the NPC. Is he still in here? No, he left. Ah. Jules the NPC and Humphreys leave, and these two lock you in here. All right, I just I, I'll sit down and wait. I'm a peasant. I'm used to being oppressed. Um, I can be oppressed all week if I need to be. <laughs> well, it's a long wait, um, and you guys, you guys sit oh, here for. Are you still got those sandwiches? Yeah, I got those sandwiches. Can I, I pull some? up my backpack and, and start pulling I'll, biscuits out of my pockets. Yeah, I'll, I'll offer, I'll offer you some pipe, and we'll just sit there and <laughs> smoke and eat and wait. You guys smoke and eat and have a good old time <laughs> while you're in prison. <laughs> 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 and uh, it's a few hours, but it passes really quickly while you're you're having a good time, passing the pipe back and forth, eating some sandwiches that are quite delicious now that you realize you were quite hungry. Um, and um, eventually, the door you hear begins to unlock. And uh, opening the door is these, these two strong men with uh, Jules uh, standing between them. And Jules looks at the two of you and says, hmm. It seems the mayor has chosen chosen to corroborate your madness. Woo! Needless to say, we are not feeling uh, as if your employment should continue here. Oh man, but but we still get paid for our work, right? One week of a month. Yes, yes, this is true. Uh, a fourth of sixty gold for you. Ooh. Yep. Um, and he, he he pays you each which you are due, it's and uh, he he uh, hands it to you very very like begrudgingly. You can just tell it pains him to count out his gold and hand it to you. Um, and then he says, "I will need you to be off this property at once. Please never show your faces here again." Okay. When we get our stuff back, uh, obviously. Uh, yes, your your stuff is returned to you at the door of the manor. <laughs> All right, that is that's fifteen hey, hey, gold for a Ralph, week. Ralph, that that pretty lady that you were talking to earlier oh, today. Oh, yeah, Maybe Lisa. You buy her of him. Well, I, I mean, you can't just buy people. She's not a, a slave, is she? Hey, she's his servant. So why not? I'll even chip in if you like. If it's not too pricey. Uh, I don't know. There's all sorts of guards around the building. I think she just works here, man. Are you sure? Okay. I'm not sure. Well, hold well, on, hold on. Let me, let, let me ask one of the, hey, hey, guard, uh, could you, could you get Lisa from the servants' quarters out back? I, I gotta say, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Can you get Tapestry from the, the servants' quarters out back? I, I need to speak to her. Um, the guard kind of looks you up and down and says, and why do you need to see Tapestry, Sam? Um, we, we have some business to is she a slave i don't think you have any business with the servants here anymore well hold I on just just move along little one all right well i'll move along but man to man like i i, I got a flutter flutter in my lungs for this girl and i i just gotta know if she's he, a servant he or a reaches slave. in his pocket and pulls out like two gold coins and says here spend this at the whole house it'll take care of that flutter for you I, I willingly accept the gold. I'm not so stupid as to turn that here. down. But I, I say, but tell me, is she, is she a slave or just a, an employed servant? 
Is there a difference? Now get down. But it, please, I please, I, I'm begging you. I, I put my. It's fine, it's fine. And I, I get down out. on my knees. I set my pitchfork down. I, I start pleading with them. Come on, just just tell me. Is she, is she a servant who, who works here or is she a, a full fledged slave? He, he nods. He shakes his head at you and maybe out of kindness, maybe truthfully, who knows? He says. They're all servants here. All servants, I tell you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I give him a couple of bows. I pick up my pitchfork. I get up, and I start walking out. I say to Elfie, Whew, "Okay, she's a servant. She'll, I'll find some time to meet her again. I just want to leave this place behind me." All righty, let's go. All right, okay. you leave the uh, the manor house. And that's pretty much all I had planned for you guys. You guys blew through the like first few floors there pretty easy. Woo! Um, if you want, we could dick around shenanigans for another hour after a break, or we can just call it here. No, I think this is a perfect ending. This story arc was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Uh, I even died and came back. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Greg. I, earlier you said this was uh, something you're preparing for one of your yeah, unperson so I'm, campaigns. Yeah, so I'm playing with the idea of running um, on stream some old school campaigns um, or maybe maybe even OSR campaigns. And this um, setup um, and, uh, and first few rooms there comes from the maze of the Blue Medusa. Um, and it looks like an awesome adventure. And hopefully that'll be one of the first I run if, if we can make this happen. It was wow. real good. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. Before before we end, can, is there a way we can ever like get the blue Medusa to come meet us at Shenanigans for drinks? You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to take that up with Neil. I think uh, he DMs wow. more of the Shenanigans than I do. Uh, maybe one day. I did. I did throw around the idea of bringing back our doppelganger um, that we met in my first in my first DM session and having him reintegrate as Crew Barb. Um, but I realized that no one remembers a doppelganger because they're all dead or retired, and no one remembers Crewbarb because they all burned to death in Dragonfire. So, ah, oh, that's, that's yeah. Sad. I had I had a whole plot thread going along where he was trying to steal the painting, and then I just decided, nah, guard guard it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that was fantastic. Loved it. Can we get a little bit of experience? Yes, you can I get quite a, a bit of experience actually. Technically. You guys conquered some storm giants. <laughs> Not really, though. Um, In let me, actually, why don't you guys do some shout outs? I'm going to add up some experience for you. All right. Alok, you want to go first? All righty, guys. Um, I am Amateur Millman across all the board, all social networkings. Um, lately, I've been putting up stuff from Oz Comic Con, which just happened two weeks ago. So there's lots of photos of me as the Joker and my missus as Harley Quinn. Got the little one as little Lucy Quinn, if you want to check that stuff out. I think I might stream today as well. I'm trying to toss up between uh, either League of Legends, YouTuber's Life, or something else. Um, and yeah, same old net networking stuff, so you can check me out on YouTube and everything else. I can't where, wait for shenanigans again. Where are these pictures? Well, they should be on my Facebook. Ah, Facebook. That's the one. Yeah, Facebook slash amateur millman or just millman, depending on if it wants, if you're putting it in the URL or you're searching for it. A little bit of me in my hyena thing with the cool ass eye on jaw. To the right. icon. Cool. Um, for myself, uh, what do we have going? Um, I am off tomorrow. Monday is my, my one day off a week. And then we've got misclicks on Tuesday. No Dicing with Death this week, unfortunately. Um, and then we'll have Hardcore Heroes and Age of Strife and more shenanigans. And in between that stuff, we are kind of rebuilding Arcadia. We're doing a lot of cartography, a lot of world building. We got to plan the next episode of Age of Strife. Um... And uh, we got to plan the next episode of Hardcore Heroes and the next episode of Shenanigans. So a lot to do this week. Uh, so you can find it here. Greg, how's that experience right. coming? Yeah, so experience-wise, you guys were so close to even more, but you didn't keep those swords, which were going to be hella treasure. Um, instead, you guys both received 975 XP each. 975? Uh, 975 each. Nice. Not gonna yeah. no you guys, you guys could have both gone well over a thousand if we'd have got some more treasure out of that. Oh. Um, you guys did awesome. Thank you for playing. I am Greg Hansen. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Greg Hansen. I play some video games uh, during the week. It's a lot of fun. Um, most notably, I play Final Fantasy every Friday. I'm playing through the entire number series. We almost beat Final Fantasy 2 last, uh, last Friday or this Friday. 
the most recent Friday. <laughs> but we had Twitch kind of crap out on me. So we're going to be mm-hmm. finishing that next Friday. Mondays, I'm starting to play um, other RPGs as my Hardcore Heroes character, Croak. I had a fucking lot of fun doing that last time. Uh, so if you like that character persona, come check it out. It's a lot of fun. Right now we're playing through Ember, and we've only one session in, so it'd be easy to catch up. Um, otherwise, I have a lot of fun doing this. Thanks a lot, Neil. All right, my pleasure. I hope to see you as DM again sometime soon. Peace out, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.